The vapor pressure of a liquid depends on temperature and does not depend on the amount of the liquid present. The purpose of experiment 3 is to investigate the temperature dependence of vapor pressure for heptane, toluene, and water. This video describes the experiment for one liquid. The other liquids will be investigated by placing a different sample into the flask and following the same steps. Before you begin the experiment, be sure you understand how the lab digital manometer works. The reading on the manometer is the amount the pressure has been reduced below atmospheric pressure. If the atmospheric pressure is 710.0 millimeters of mercury and the manometer reads 650.0 millimeters of mercury, then the pressure in the system is 60.0 millimeters of mercury. To zero the manometer, make sure the vacuum is off and the system is open to the atmosphere. Turn on the manometer and push the hold button for two to three seconds. Put acetone and dry ice into the Dewar flask. Make sure the thermometer is in the correct position to measure the temperature accurately. Check the apparatus to make sure all stoppers are firmly in place. Two stopcocks allow air and vapor to go in and out of the system. One stopcock is situated on the safety bottle. Air will enter the experimental system when this stopcock is open. Along with the safety bottle, this stopcock is a safety feature of the experimental setup. The other stopcock is situated on the tubing adjacent to the safety bottle. The path to the vacuum pump is closed when this stopcock is closed. The stopcock is used to control the vacuum during the experiment. The apparatus will now be tested for air tightness. Open the high vacuum tap. Open the stopcock that leads to the vacuum and evacuate the system to manometer reading approximately equal to 650 millimeters of mercury. Close the stopcock that leads to the vacuum pump. Observe the manometer reading for about 30 seconds. The system is airtight if there is no change in the manometer reading. Open the stopcock on the top of the safety bottle to fill the apparatus with air. Remove the thermometer and stopper from the flask and fill it to slightly more than one-third full with the liquid under investigation. Remember to add boiling chips. Restopper the flask. Start water circulating through the condenser. Seal the system by closing the stopcock on top of the safety bottle. Open the stopcock that leads to the vacuum and evacuate the system to the highest manometer reading then close the stopcock that leads to the vacuum tap. If the liquid starts to boil right away, open the stopcock on the safety bottle and let some air in. Apply heat to the flask to bring the liquid to a boil. Adjust the rheostat and the lab jack to promote a slow, steady boil. Tapping the flask continually promotes even boiling. Observe the boiling point. The liquid is boiling when it is bubbling in the flask and it drips off the condenser and the thermometer. Simultaneously note the boiling temperature and the manometer reading and record them in your logbook. Open the stopcock on the safety bottle to admit enough air to stop the boiling. The manometer reading should drop by 30 to 50 millimeters of mercury. Continue heating until a new boiling point is reached and recorded. Repeat the procedure until the manometer reading is close to zero and the pressure in the system is close to the atmospheric pressure. Make sure you have a minimum of seven to eight boiling points recorded. Open the system by opening the stopcock on the safety bottle. Remove the heat source and set it aside. Do not turn it off. Cool the liquid in the boiling flask using an ice water mixture if required. Pour the sample into the appropriate waste container. Put the boiling chips into a paper towel and throw into the garbage. Clean the flask using acetone squirt bottle. Use the vacuum to dry the flask. Remember to turn off the condenser water at the end of the experiment. <laughs>